Hey guys, Chris Amos here with Winding Road Magazine. This week we have the Audi S7 to test. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, we're gonna take it out here around some of the roads in this area. I'll show you what it can do. And we'll talk a little bit about this car. This thing is fantastic. I love it. I want one. It's that good. Again, like the S3 that we had last week, the S7 just seems to do everything really well. The suspension is good. The engine is fantastic. It even sounds nice. It goes like stink. As you can see back there, launch control is pretty crazy. This particular car is on winter tires, so we don't have quite the outright grip that you would normally, but given that it is uh, winter in Michigan, they are a welcome addition in these colder temperatures. Right now we're driving in dynamic mode, and as you can hear, you get a little bit of uh, overrun. So the S7 rides on air suspension. Um, it's pretty adjustable. There's a pretty significant difference between comfort and dynamic mode. Um, it's just, it reacts really well to bumps, it's very well planted, it handles well. And you couple that with the sport differential that's in this car and the all-wheel drive. It makes for a wicked driving experience. The rate at which this car covers ground is pretty mind-boggling. Going around those turns, excellent weighting to the steering, really pretty nice steering feel. Steering is pretty light when you're just cruising around downtown and it weights up nicely around the turns. It's a lot like, you know, Audi's other racks. I would say this, the steering in this is a little bit heavier than the S3 was. Of course, much bigger, much heavier car, but it really feels good. Excellent brakes. Most of your braking is at the top of the pedal, and there's a nice progressive feel as you push a little bit harder. Let's do one more launch, controlled launch, just for fun. So you have to be in dynamic mode and then sport mode in the transmission with traction control off. Push the brake all the way to the floor, rev it up. first 20 30 miles an hour your head kind of goes a little bit light and your vision blurs it launches so hard for such a big long wheelbase car turn in on this is really sharp and uh, the car rotates really well uh, the, that sport differential in the back just tends to kind of bring the rear end right around whether it's a tight hairpin corner or a long high-speed sweeper. This car handles just really well. Let's put it in comfort here and we'll see how it rides on this road which is pretty bumpy. It's a good test for suspension. Pretty significant difference between comfort and dynamic. 
the dynamic you just feel a little bit more of the bumps it's noticeably stiffer and then in comfort you just tend to kind of waft over everything there's a slight change in ride height with the air suspension between these settings but it's maybe no more than half an inch or an inch or so it's not that significant Again, really neutral handling. There isn't a whole lot of understeer, not a whole lot of oversteer. You just point and shoot and the car goes where you tell it to. And of course, when you want it to, it settles down nicely. Let's pull off here and we'll look, take a look at some of the specs on the spec sheet. Alright, here's our Monroney. So, 2016 Audi S7 4-liter turbo Quattro S-Tronic. So the MSRP on this is 82,900 and is equipped. We're at 93,825. This car has the S7 Sport package, which has Audi's dynamic steering, the Quattro Sport rear differential, and the Sport exhaust with black tips. And uh, this also has the driver assistant package with adaptive cruise control, lane assist, corner view, camera system. The S7 Sport package is $3,500. The driver assistance package is $2,450. And then the comfort seating package is $1,950. This also has aluminum black wood inlays for $1,100. And then the 20-inch wheel package uh, with summer tires, which actually aren't on the car right now because we have winter tires. So that brings the price up to 93.8. Gas mileage, we've been getting around 20, 21 miles to the gallon. So I would say if you're pretty conservative with your throttle inputs, that's about right. And uh, yeah, man, overall, this car, 450 horsepower. Uh, I think it's a, it was a bi-turbo V8. Lots of torque. I think it says 406 pound-feet of torque. And it sounds good. You'd think in many of these turbo applications, you lose some of the noise from the exhaust, but you can still hear pretty good sound on this. Let's take a look around the car. I'll show you what it looks like. I apologize for the wind noise. of cargo space. This is almost a shooting brake. Not quite, but almost. You've got, you can fold the seats down and get even more room. There's a little cargo cover here. Plenty of room in the back seats. Headroom's a little bit low, but it's not too bad. 5'7", I'm fitting in here, great. Plenty of leg room. No problem fitting some adult passengers back here. I do really like this wood and aluminum inlay here. This is pretty nice. I've been mostly driving around this week in individual mode. And then I have, I have set to, you have a bunch of different options you can change. Engine transmission is set on auto, air suspension is on automatic, steering is on dynamic. You just get a little bit better steering feel in dynamic mode. And then I've been leaving the sport differential on auto and then dynamic engine sound.
Again, really quick steering ratio in this car. And you also have a reverse camera. You've got a reverse camera, a front camera, side cameras, above parking view, and then you can see rear for the sides. And the lines turn with the steering wheel. And then when you go into drive, it usually switches to the front camera, but uh, since I've been messing with it, it's not gonna do that. Transmission is fantastic, shifts really smooth, almost you can't, you can't even feel the shifts when you're just driving around normally. And then it's very responsive with the paddles, it shifts super quick when you're hustling it. The only complaint that I would have is that when you're in the higher RPMs, kind of shifting in manual mode, it doesn't quite gear down for you as quickly or as much as you'd want. So if you want to grab a gear lower, it won't let you so that it doesn't rev the engine up as high. So it's a little bit conservative on its downshifts, but I've mostly just been leaving it in sport mode, and that does a really good job of picking the gear you want when you need it. You almost don't need to use the paddles in the back for manual with this car. The automatic transmission does such a good job figuring it out. The ride isn't even too bad in dynamic mode. Um, this is, again, this is our bumpy road test, and it's pretty comfortable on here. Overall, the S7 is a really solid feeling car. It's, it's heavier and you can feel the weight, but the way that it handles and reacts around corners and the chassis, it, it just it feels like a much, uh, a much more nimble car than it really should be. And uh, that's really pretty high praise for something this big and this heavy. You saw there on that 90 degree hairpin, the car just rotated right around. Let's do a braking test up here. 60 miles an hour. Can't really want more for brakes. For what we're doing here though, we could So here there's a little bit of tire squeal from the winter tires, but after just an initial bit of understeer, the rear end just kind of swings right around. You can feel that sport differential bring it around, and man, it's super satisfying to drive, especially when you're right on the limit. Right now we have traction control, and pretty much everything's on. This car just inspires so much confidence. properly quick. I've always said this is kind of the four-door Audi R8. If you put it into manual or you downshift with the paddle shifters, it won't let you ride the red line. It will shift up for you. Today it's pretty windy out, so you could probably hear a little bit of wind noise from that, but otherwise this car is really quiet in here, as you'd expect from a $93,000 top-level Audi. It's nice and quiet, it's super comfortable. All your touch points are excellent. This is the same, same steering wheel we had last week in the S3, but it works, it feels fantastic, no complaints. Interior feels good. These seats are super comfortable. Again, they're heated and cooled, and you can turn them on at the same time. 
I've always said you know you've made it in this world when you can run your heated and your cooled seats simultaneously. This car is a really good example of a new car that does everything well. It's properly quick, but it's fun. It's fun to drive and it's engaging to drive pretty much all the time. It's, it's, a, it's a pleasure to drive around town at slow speeds and it just gets better the harder you push it. Right around this corner. That sport differential just bring us around. Of course, these poor winter tires, they have their limit. We're about to wrap things up here, so I think let's take it on the highway. Put it into comfort mode. At 70 miles an hour, we're turning over just about 1900, 1800 RPMs. You put this in seventh gear and it just, uh, it turns into a big old lazy V8. Here's a good example of how well the air suspension soaks up bumps. I always cringe taking cars over this section of road, but there isn't anything too dangerous, at least for the wheels. But yeah, it's been a real pleasure driving this car all week. Audi has, uh, Audi has definitely done something special with this. This is kind of, uh, if you're in the market for something around 100 grand, you can't really beat this. The Audi S8 is a little bit more expensive, and honestly, it's a little bit more tuned to luxury. It's a little bit softer. And dynamically, the S7 is just so good. Personally, I think it's better looking than the S6 kind of the field of cars in this category it drives really really well you do get a lot of car for your money on this that's for sure all right guys well i'm sure we will we'll have posted a few other videos on this car by now uh, we'll have our pov night drive and our pov test drive be sure to check those out and you can also visit us online at windingroadracing.com where we saw the race gear that you need to go faster and as always thanks for subscribing thanks for viewing we'll see you guys in the next pov review take it easy